So you pulled on Kazuha or Klee's banner, hoping to get the new four-star Heizo along the way. But instead, your pulls looked like an episode of The Real House Husbandos of Inazuma because you got copy after copy after copy of Toma. So, what do you do with him? Well, I'm here to talk about our adorably loyal housekeeper slash bodyguard, what he's good at and bad at, how to build him, and what teams to use him in. And that part might actually surprise you. Although Toma has a bad reputation for not being a very strong or viable character, he is actually a great pyro support and shielder, and can be a lot more useful than you might think. His shield has some unique and interesting mechanics, and though of course not as strong as Zhongli's, it has the potential to be the second strongest shield in the game at maximum strength. A well-invested Diona's shield can be stronger, but depending on team comp, you might not always want to use her, making Toma a great alternative. He also allows you to still have a shielder if you don't have Zhongli or want to use him in another team. His normal attacks are nothing special, but you can straight up ignore them as ideally you would want to be focusing on his shield anyway. If you do want to build him as a DPS, by all means go ahead, but I think Toma's true potential lies in being a shield support. His elemental skill deals AoE pyro damage, grants a shield known as a blazing barrier, and applies pyro to himself, which can be used as a cleanse, but it goes away if you swap to another character, so you can't use it for things like Kazuha's E. The shield scales off Toma's HP and has an initial duration of 8 seconds. This seems very short, especially with the 15 second cooldown, but with the use of his burst, the shield can stack upon itself, constantly refreshing and getting stronger. His burst again deals AoE pyro damage and sends out a cone of flames called a fiery collapse when your active character performs a normal attack. This is also what refreshes the shield. The burst itself grants a tiny shield, but what you're stacking is actually the shield from his skill, so don't be confused by the small number indicated here. It also has a high energy cost of 80, which can be problematic as Toma does have some energy issues, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Typically, you would want to use his skill first to get the shield, then cast his burst and insert auto attacks as needed to keep refreshing it. Note that it's just the auto attack animation that refreshes the shield and it doesn't actually have to come into contact with anything. Enemies don't even need to be present at all. Another thing to know, because it isn't actually stated in the description, is that when his burst is in effect, which you can see by the two emblems around the character, it provides anti-knockback, which is incredibly useful for some characters whose rotation depends on not being interrupted, which I'll get into in the team section. His A1 passive makes it so that when your active character obtains or refreshes a blazing barrier, the shield strength is increased by 5% up to a maximum of 25%. So you do have to stack the shield in order to get it to maximum strength, but you do so simply by performing auto attacks so it's easy to attain. His A4 passive, in my opinion, is not nearly as useful as it increases his fiery collapse damage based on a small percentage of Toma's max HP, which frankly isn't much even when he has a lot of HP because his attack is pretty low anyway, but I guess extra damage is extra damage. And finally, his level 1 passive grants a 20% chance of granting a double catch while fishing in Inazuma. Not the most exciting sounding talent, but if you're farming for the catch, it will make you so, so happy every time it happens, trust me. Toma is okay at C0, but his constellations do greatly improve his kit and utility. C1 reduces the cooldown of his skill and burst by 3 seconds when your active character other than Toma is attacked while protected by Blazing Barrier. This doesn't sound like a lot, but it really helps to maintain his shield uptime. C2 increases his burst duration by 3 seconds, which along with his C1 ostensibly gives it 100% uptime as long as you keep refreshing his shield and it doesn't break. C3 and C5 increase the level of his skill and burst respectively. C4 is by far Toma's most useful constellation, as it refunds 15 energy every time you cast his burst. This essentially makes his burst cost 65 instead of 80 and alleviates a lot of his energy problems. It is still possible to meet his energy needs without this, but having it makes it a lot easier. 
And finally, his C6 increases all party members' normal charged and plunging attacks by 15% for 6 seconds whenever a blazing barrier is obtained or refreshed. This provides great utility when pairing him with units who rely on those types of attacks for most of their damage. And since you'll constantly be refreshing his shield with normal attacks, and every time Toma uses his skill in burst, you can potentially benefit from this bonus for as long as you keep his shield up. Now before getting into weapons, I do want to bring up Toma's biggest weakness, and that is his energy generation. His burst costs 80 energy, and he doesn't do a very good job at battering himself, especially pre-C4, since his skill has a long cooldown and only generates a small number of particles. So you want to try to get as much ER on him as possible. I like to aim for upwards of 200% energy recharge on him, or even more if you don't have his fourth constellation. You can potentially get away with less, depending on team comp and rotation, as well as Favonius weapons, and of course his C4, but being able to use his burst off cooldown is super important, as without it you lose most of his shield's uptime. So as a shielder you might think of something like the Black Tassel for its HP substat to try to maximize Toma's shield strength, but personally I think the trade-off of sacrifice sacrificing ER for HP is not worth it since it doesn't matter how strong his shield can be if you're never able to use his burst to get it to full strength in the first place. That being said, I believe his best weapon to be the Favonius Lance. Not only does it have a high ER substat, but it has the ability to grant additional elemental particles upon landing a critical hit. This aids not only Toma's energy regeneration, but also provides utility by supplying energy to the rest of the team. Don't be scared by needing to crit in order to proc the passive, as even with a low crit rate it happens more often than you'd expect, so whatever crit rate substats you end up with from your artifacts are fine without you having to worry too much about it. Other weapons to consider are the Skyward Spine and the Catch for their ER substat, but I only recommend equipping Toma with one of these if they're not being used by someone else. Especially the Catch, as it is much better used by someone like Raiden or Shang Ling, as the passive on it is not beneficial for Toma, but if you're not using it on another character, it does take care of a huge portion of his energy needs. However, I still prefer the Favonius Lance for its utility. As for the Kitain Cross Spear, which looks really good on him, and it's what he's holding in his splash art, the Elemental Mastery substat doesn't really provide anything for Toma, and the passive, which looks good on paper for its energy refunding mechanic, is not as good as the raw energy recharge something like the Fablands can provide. It also requires being crafted, so I wouldn't spend the billet on it. If you really have absolutely nothing else and do need to craft something, I would go for the Prototype Star Glitter instead, just for the energy recharge. As for artifacts, for early AR players I would suggest just giving him whatever you have with the most HP and ER substats. The two-piece exile and two-piece scholar set can help him with his energy needs until you can start farming for 5-star artifacts. After AR45, my favorite set for him is the two-piece emblem, two-piece tenacity combo, as they provide Toma with an additional 20% energy recharge and 20% HP respectively, both of which he needs a lot of. The four-piece of either set, however, is not beneficial for Toma as you don't need the additional burst strength from the emblem set and his elemental skill has much too long of a cooldown to utilize the effect of the four-piece tenacity set. Also note that the 35% increase in shield strength from the Retracing Bolite set only affects the character who has it equipped, so equipping it on Toma serves no purpose. You can also run him with a 4-piece Noblesse set if you can still meet his energy needs and you have no other Noblesse holder on the team. As far as teams go, Toma is actually a lot more flexible than a lot of people give him credit for. He's also not knowing for having a place in the meta, but one of, if not his best team, is actually with Hu Tao. He provides Pyro Resonance, and his shield allows Hu Tao to remain at low HP without the risk of taking too much damage. He can also apply Pyro to be swirled to shred the resistance with VV by your Enemo unit before switching to Hu Tao, increasing her damage. She can also constantly refresh the shield by inserting a normal attack between charged attacks. And at C6, Toma increases Hu Tao's charged attack damage by 15%, which she really benefits from since she's going to be spamming them. The biggest concern people have is Toma stealing Hu Tao's vapes, but with the right rotation it doesn't happen often if at all so it's not going to affect her damage very much. Another option is to swap Hu Tao with Yanfei, as she benefits from having Toma for all of the same reasons. She can also take advantage of the anti-knockback provided by Toma's shield, allowing her to not be interrupted when performing her charged attacks. 
Another character who pairs really well with Toma is Yoimiya, who is coincidentally coming back on the next banner. Yoimiya spams her auto attacks, so she's always refreshing the Blazing Barrier, and if you have Toma's C6, she gets the 15% increased normal attack damage. Her attack string also relies on getting all the way to her fifth hit as it deals the most damage, but if she's interrupted, she loses a lot of her DPS, so the anti-knockback allows her to consistently execute all of her combos. If you don't have Zhongli or want to use him on another team, you can actually slot Toma in with Xiao, along with Bennett and Sucrose. Toma and Bennett provide pyro resonance to increase Xiao's attack, and Toma's shield protects Xiao while he's vulnerable during his burst. You do have to change your rotation a little bit here in order to keep refreshing the blazing barrier by inserting normal attacks between plunges or by using the jet combo, but you're not actually going to lose a significant amount of damage by doing so, and in some cases the jet combo can actually be optimal for Xiao anyway. Xiao's plunges also benefit from Toma's C6 if you have it. You can run Ayato and Toma together for the lore, even though it might not be the most optimal combination, but Ayato's slashes during his skill do refresh the blazing barrier and proc the flame cones from Toma's burst. So vape Ayato, why not? They look good together and it's a lot of fun. Other teams include running him with Raiden, like in a Sunfire team, or you can slot him into the Raiden national team in place of Bennett if you need him for another team. But keep in mind, this team needs a lot of energy recharge even with Raiden being a battery, as both Toma and Shangling have trouble batterying themselves, let alone each other. You can run a Reverse Melt Quick Swap team with units like Bennett, Kaya, and Rosaria, though you may lose out on a lot of damage by replacing Shangling with Toma, but it's something to play around with. And you can run him in a double pyro double geo team, something like Toma and Bennett for pyro resonance and Ningguang and either Geo Traveler or Yunjin for the geo resonance. Ningguang is also on the current banner along with Toma, so why not pair them together? Ningguang is quite squishy, so she needs a shield, and again, if you don't have Zhongli or he's needed elsewhere, Toma's shield keeps Ningguang protected while also preventing her from being interrupted during her charged attacks, which have a bit of a long animation. And just like previous units, Toma's C6 will give Ningguang's normal and charged attacks the 15% increase. And if you also have Ningguang at C6, her charged attack after casting her burst is a massive nuke. Last but not least, Toma actually pairs really well with Heizo, who is also featured on the current banner, and who you were probably trying to get aside from the 5-star. So if you were lucky enough to get both Toma and Heizo, you already have half your team. Heizo can build up his declension stacks by constantly swirling the pyro applied by Toma's fiery collapse, as well as providing some additional swirl damage. Heizo's normal attacks will refresh the blazing barrier, and should you choose to charge his elemental skill, the knockback prevention comes in handy. And once again, Toma's C6 will give Heizo the 15% damage increase on his normal and charged attacks. You can add another pyro unit like Bennett for the resonance and his attack buff, and the fourth slot can be a flex for any off-field damage dealer. So with all that in mind, I hope I've given some insight into how much more Toma can provide than people give him credit for. If at first you were disappointed by pulling him from the current banner, perhaps now you'll be more willing to give this house husbando a chance to show you what he can do. Thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe for more videos to come, and I will see you next time.